So what you want to do is identify those high leverage activities and allocate some time every day to do them. I looked at that and saw exactly where my time is going. So you kind of feel very valuable. And remember EAD. Hello, fellow creator. Welcome back to the channel, the best spot on YouTube for creative productivity and growth. So I'm going to be honest with you guys. For the last couple of months, I felt a little bit overwhelmed with my business because let's face it, the role of the creator is two in one. As an entrepreneur, you got a business to run. On the one side, we have Dan, the creator. That is the one responsible for creating YouTube videos like this one, producing courses and publishing articles and book summaries. Then on the other side, we got then the manager. That is the entrepreneur me, the one that's running the business and the one that is managing the team. And so I tried to the best of my ability to juggle these two roles. And so that meant that I was running around like a madman trying to complete as many tasks as possible and working so many more hours. So one day I sat down and I decided this was enough. It's enough. This was not the reason that I started my business. Yes, I want to get things done, but at the same time, I also want to have fun because the reality is even though I was doing more things, I wasn't focused on the future, on the long-term results. I was only focused on my present work. I wasn't doing anything meaningful for the long-term results. And in this period of overwhelm, I read an article on redreads.com that completely changed the way that I approach prioritization and the tasks that I am doing. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the life-changing magic of the 10,000 per hour work. So let's start by looking at the 10K framework. All right, so the idea here is that all the tasks that you do fit into one quadrant of a matrix. And in the axis, you have skill and leverage. So on the bottom left, falls the $10 per hour work. And this is work that requires low skill and has low leverage. And this type of work is all about the instant reward, the dopamine rush that you get when you finish a task and you're just happy. And because it requires low skill, it's basically work that anyone can do. And because it's low leverage, that means you're not producing anything meaningful for the long-term results. So in reality, this isn't work that is gonna move the needle. Yes, you're doing a lot of things, but it's kind of pretending just to be busy. Now, personally, I get this feeling, this $10 per hour work, every time that I have to check my business, business email and reply to things that I know are not going to lead anywhere. And a nice litmus test for this type of work, something that I found in the article as well, is could I do this hungover? And I kind of like that rule because if it's something that you could do hungover, you really don't need a lot of energy, you really don't need a lot of skill. All right, so that's the $10 per hour work. Then we have a hundred per hour work. Here, the tasks don't require a lot of skill, but they are high leverage. And what that means is you're basically investing your time on not so relevant tasks in the large scheme of things. It's leverage of the wrong skill. Yes, of course, this is optimization, but it's optimization of the wrong things. You should only do the work on the things that you and you alone are capable of doing, that is the best allocation of your time. And we'll get to that in a little bit. Then we have a thousand per hour work. And this type of work relies on a unique skill. Basically at this point, you're very hard to replace. Now, while this is better than 10 and hundred per hour, the problem with this type of work is that it lacks leverage. You cannot leave anything on autopilot because your presence is needed at all times. And finally, we have the magical realm of 10,000 per hour work. These are the high leverage and high skill activities. And these are tasks that are 10,000 times more valuable than 10 our tasks. And to get here, you got to make the best of your time and always think in the long term because all your actions, all your tasks that you're doing that, they will have impact tomorrow. They will have impact in the future. It might be slow. It might take some time, but all the tasks that you're doing today will have an impact on the future. It's doing the important rather than the urgent. It's looking at the big picture, at the big scheme of things, thinking, where do I want to go? And what do I need today to make sure that happens in the future? Now, the tricky part is that you don't get to spend your entire day on this type of work, but what you can try instead, the ultimate goal that you want is to have as many $10,000 per hour tasks that you can. That said, this isn't called 10K work because it pays you 10K per hour. The real purpose of this framework is the mindset that the real valuable work is the one that gives you more time in the future, that liberates you and that gives you leverage. It's a deliberate investment of time, money and resources for a better outcome down the line. So what do you want to do is identify those high leverage activities and allocate some time every day to do them. All right, so let's put this in practice. And step one is to define your 10K work. So I did this exercise again when I was overwhelmed. And the first thing that I did was make a list of all my recurring tasks. So for example, let's take one of my projects, my blog. So I have to write articles, write book summaries, and then I have a newsletter. And then I gotta make sure that the list is also managed. Then I have another project, this YouTube channel. And for me, that meant time for scripting, for recording, for editing, and then later publishing all the videos. Then I also produce courses and masterclasses, and from time to time run live masterclasses. Then I also had the managing side of the things. So making sure that my team was operating efficiently, doing all the payments and the accounting side of things and setting up all the systems for the business. And it's important 
important that you spend some amount of time here. Take a week, take two weeks if necessary. And as your days go by, just simply write down all the tasks that you are completing. And you'll be surprised by the end of the week how many different things you have to do. And once you have that master list of all your tasks, now it's a matter of defining what type of work each task is. So next to each of your tasks, simply write the dollar amount that you think that task is worth. So here's my list that I wrote back then. And I'll just give you some examples. So $10 per hour work, reading and replying to emails that I know are not going to lead anywhere, publishing articles and book summaries on the blog, not writing them, just publishing them on WordPress. Then for example, for $100, I wrote down editing my videos and scheduling my one productivity newsletter, then a thousand writing my newsletters and having calls with my team. And finally, 10k work, working on systems that are going to improve my business in the future. So basically workflows, strategy and direction for the business and becoming a better speaker so that I can deliver better videos and better courses. So that's how I define some of my tasks. So you can do the same exercise, just do a master list of all your tasks and match them to the corresponding dollar value that you think each task has. After that, it's time to move to step two, where is your time going? So after I defined my tasks and I knew that I wanted to spend the majority of my time on 10K work, then it was a matter of analyzing one week and see where I was actually spending my time. And to do this, what I did was very simple. I time tracked my time. So every 30 minutes, I would write down exactly what I was doing at that point. So I'll just write the name of the task. And then I would also add some kind of context so that I could remember later why I was doing that task. And then at the end of that week on a Friday, I looked at that and saw exactly where my time is going. And obviously it wasn't a revelation at this point, but I wasn't spending the majority of my time where I wanted on the 10K work. Now, don't get me wrong, I did do some 10K work. For example, on that week, I worked on multiple playbooks that were gonna help my team learn a lot faster and perform a lot better. But I was also doing a lot of tasks on the other side of the spectrum, on the $10 per hour work. So I knew I needed to make some changes if I wanted to make 10K work a habit. In the beginning, it was very hard to change because as a business owner, as a creator, you're always trying to fix up things. And you get very excited because you know those things and they're very easy to fix. So you kind of feel very valuable. Yes, I'll just edit this video. I'll just reply to this email. I'll just publish this one blog post. So the way that I solved this, this reorganization, this reprioritization was through time blocking and batching. So the main blocks of my day, those times in the day that I have the most energy, I reserve those for 10K work. Now, in the beginning, this was just one block per day. All I wanted to do in the beginning was to spend at least one hour per day doing 10K work. That's it, just one hour per day. So that was the most important block of my day. And then I would try to schedule other things around that one block. So that's how I saw it. Then what I did was power up this habit by doing theme decks. So for example, recording Recording videos is a high leverage activity because I can record the video once and then it will be watched forever. So I turned Tuesdays into my YouTube days. So every time that a Tuesday arrived, I knew it was time to record some YouTube videos. And so what I did was try to record three videos because that's the amount of videos that I publish per week every single Tuesday. And because I did that, that freed up the rest of the week to focus on other projects on other areas. Like I said before, it's about liberation that you're not stressed that you have to produce videos for tomorrow. So Tuesday I record and then Wednesday I don't worry about it because I send all of this to my editor and now I have time to focus on 10k work like planning and strategy for my business. You can also train your brain to always think long term. So when you're about to do something, when you have a task coming up, ask yourself, is this going to contribute to my ultimate goal? Is this going to bring me leverage? Is this something someone else can do or only I can do it? And when you ask these questions, when you look at tasks from that perspective, you're ready to step forward to scale. And now we're going to talk about the EAD principle to eliminate, automate and delegate. Again, you're trying to free your time from $10 work, focus on 10k work. And so what I kept thinking this time was, how can I free myself? from low work? How can I stay focused in 10K work almost all the time? And so I realized that some of the tasks I could eliminate. So let's talk about those. No matter what, there are always some tasks that are doing nothing for your business and not contributing to any ultimate goal. So one of the things that I did was I stopped replying to emails that I knew were not going anywhere. Now that might not sound like a lot, but now that I have a principle, now that I have a rule, I don't reply to this kind of email. I don't need to worry about it anymore. So that's one of the tasks that I eliminated. Look at your master list. What are the things that you can eliminate right now. On the things remaining, you're going to try to automate as much as possible. Now, technology allows so many types of automations. The one that I prefer to use the most are templates. So I did that in my email as well. There's a certain type of email that I do want to reply to, but I don't want to write it up every single time. So what I did was I created a simple template in Gmail. And every time I get that type of email, I can simply reply with that template. After that, yes, I might need a custom reply, but it's nice to know that the first one is just out of the way. And I also did that for my presentations. So again, I give live masterclasses from time to time. So all I did was I spend some time creating a nice presentation that I now can reuse for all my next live masterclasses. I might have to adjust a little bit, but the main boilerplate template is already there. It's consistent with my brandings. It's very nice. And now all I have to do it is adjust to that specific type of masterclass. Now for the remaining tasks, you've got to try to delegate as much as possible. And I'll give you an example. When I started my YouTube channel, I was doing all the editing myself and I took a long time to edit one video. Long story short, I didn't have a high skill in this activity. So I would have to look up tutorials on how to do things, but still it was important because 
because I wanted to publish the videos. And if I kept at that pace of me editing myself, I would probably manage to get like one video per week. And that would take a lot of my time. And so I decided to find an editor for my videos. I looked for a professional. And because of this, two things happened. First, I can focus on recording more videos per week because now I only have to focus on the recording side of things, not the editing part. And second, the editor is responsible for the whole editing. And because he has a much, much higher skill than I have, hopefully the videos will turn out a lot nicer for you guys. And this way, this high leverage activity doesn't take a lot of my time and I don't need to stress about it. So look at your tasks and remember EAD. Eliminate, automate, and then delegate. And that's the story of how I stopped being stuck working on low leverage activities and instead invested my time on 10K work. And because of that, I get things done while also having more fun and I manage my time a lot better. If you want to discover my top nine tips about time management, all you have to do is click here to watch how I manage my time as a creator. In that video, I give you my top nine time management tips. I talk about three principles, three tactics, and three tools that I use to manage my time a lot better as a creator. So click here to go watch that video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.